In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use VSDC and we're going to be creating a project from start to finish. Now VSDC is a great video editor because it's completely free to use, there's no time restrictions or watermarks, and you don't need a powerful computer to run it. So with that being said, let's get started. So I'll link VSDC down below, but the first thing you want to do is go ahead and download it. And once you open it up, we're going to create a blank project. And here we're going to set up all of the components of this project. So I'm going to call this the Mini Cooper commercial because we're making a Mini Cooper commercial and I'm going to make it 1080p and 30 FPS. And I'll also link all the files down below that we're going to be using. And once the project is set up, we're just going to click on finish. Now the workspace does look a little bit complicated at first, but we're going to walk through it right now. A lot of these elements you see over here, you can also access by going on the ribbon, but we're going to start off with the center and this is where you're going to see the video preview. Now on the left side, this is where we're going to be able to add different elements such as videos as well as text. And then to the left of that, we're going to see all of the objects that we add as well as the effects that we apply. Right below, we're going to see all of the video layers that we're going to be editing. And on the right side, we can see the properties of clips. And here we can add basic edits such as changing the speed and other properties. And then if we click down here, we're going to see all of the resources that we add. And then on the right side, we're going to see other basic effects that we can add to our clips once we click on them. And on the top, we're going to be able to manage our projects. Now projects are made up of different scenes and each scene has a bunch of clips. So we're going to be just using one scene for this project. Here we can edit our scenes. Now on the edit tab, you're going to see all of the similar edits we can add below. So you can do things here such as align your clips as well as move them around and center them. You then have the view tab in case something over here disappears. And then most of our edits are going to be made in the editor. So here we can add our objects, our video effects and our audio effects. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be adding all of the clips we need to our project. And so what we can do is we can click over here to add video or image. But what you can also do is you can go ahead and you can drag your files. So over here, I have all of my files. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all and just drag them to the resource window. So here in the resource window, once everything's loaded, we're going to see all of our elements and then we can just drag them to our timeline. And so I'm going to add the four clips as a video. And right now I'm just going to add one to each layer so you can see how the different layers work like so. And now we have all of our clips added. And if you wanted to preview the clips, what we can do is we can click on this play button to see it in window, or we can click on this I button and it's going to play our project as a preview. Now, when you're working with the layers, it's pretty simple. You can drag clips to move them along the layer and you can also move clips up and down the layer. Now you can also hide layers by clicking on the I to change the visibility. And you can also lock layers by clicking on this lock button down here. And now as you can see, the top layer is not moving. Now, if you accidentally move a clip and it's out of position, you can also center it by clicking on the horizontal align and the vertical align, and it's going to be centered to your canvas. And then you can also change the layer size by dragging these lines over here. And if you wanted to change the layer uh, width and you wanted to zoom out of the timeline, you can use the scale over here to zoom in and out. And so right now we have four different clips of this Mini Cooper. The first one is of the Mini Cooper driving forward like so. And this one is actually going to be our end clip and we're going to trim the end of it. So to trim a clip within your timeline, all you have to do is click on one end of it and drag it like so. Now the second clip is this front view, which I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm actually going to click on this clip and click delete to get rid of it. And as you can see, the whole layer gets deleted. And I'm just going to move this clip to the end because this is going to be our final clip. The next clip is going to be a front view of the Mini Cooper driving in like so. And this one we're going to also just trim, but we're going to be using the split tool. So once you have a clip selected, you want to go into the editor tab. And here we can use the razor to split the clip into parts. So I'm going to just split it right here. And to do so, I'm going to click on the clip and then click on the razor button like so. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to cut my clip. Now I'm going to just play this and see how far along I want to keep this clip. And I think right at the six second mark is good. So I'm going to go to six seconds, clip, click on the clip again, and then click on the razor tool again. And it's going to split the clip again. So now we have three different parts. And then I'm going to click on the first part and click delete. And then the second part and click delete. And this is what we're left with. And I'm just going to move it up. And the final clip, clip we're going to be editing is going to be this Mini Cooper from a side view. And so if we click play, we can see it driving along the side. And this clip, the camera speed is a bit different as well as the actual settings because we can see it looks different. So we're going to be editing that later. But basically, I just want to keep this clip from the entrance point of the Mini Cooper. So I'm going to drag to cut it there all the way up to near the end, like so. And then I'm going to drag it like that. And then we're going to move these clips in order. So I'm going to drag this first clip and put it at the start. I'm going to take this second clip and put it right after. And then this third clip at the end. And we're going to be working with them all within one layer. So the next step is to actually edit these clips. And we're going to be making three key edits. We're going to be modifying the actual clip. We're going to be adding transitions. And we're going to be changing the properties. So the first thing we have to do is change the properties. And if we play this clip right now, of the side profile, we can see that the car is moving very slowly and that's not going to cut it for our commercial. So instead I'm going to click on this clip and I'm going to go to the properties window and we're going to see a lot of the properties of this clip and we're going to change the speed to about 320%. And then if we play it back now, we can see that it's moving a lot faster like so. And I'm actually going to just shorten it a little bit more and then move it back. And we're also going to speed up the first and third clip by a little bit. So we're going to make it 125% for the first clip. And we're going to click on the third clip and also make it 125%. And then we're going to drag it. And we have all the clips that are back to back to back. Now we're also going to change the visuals of these clips. So if we click on it, what we can do is we can go to video effects and we can add a bunch of different adjustments as well as filters but we don't need to do that right now. Instead, we just need to change the saturation, which is a basic effect. So I'm going to click on this clip and over here in the basic effects window, I'm just going to modify the saturation and move it up a little bit to about 167, like so. And the second clip, we don't need to change as much. I think for this one, we only need to move it up to 133. And then for the third clip, we're also going to move it to 167. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a fade at the beginning of the first clip and a fade at the end of the last clip. And so to do this, all we have to do is click on the clip, go to video effects, transparency, and then we're going to fade in. And as you can see, it already opens up all of the settings for this fade. So we're going to do it from the scene's beginning and we're going to make it last half a second. And then we're going to click on OK. And what you're going to see now in our timeline is that we have the main scene over here with our three clips, but it's also opened up the effects for that one video clip at the start. And we can see that video clip has a fade. And you can also access that timeline by double clicking on the first video clip and that fade shows up again. And so if we click on play now, we're going to see that fade. And we're going to do the same thing for the last clip by clicking on it, going to video effects, transparency, and then fade out. And we're going to do it from the scene end. So it's going to play at the end. And then we're going to click on OK. And now we're going to see the other video clip open up in the timeline and a fade has been added to the end. So if we go back into our main scene, what we can see is that there's going to be a fade at the start and there's going to be a fade at the end. So those are all the basic edits that we can add to our clips. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add an image. And in this case, it's going to be the Mini Cooper logo. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the resource window because we've already added the logo. But if you haven't, you can also click on add image and add it from the files over here. But we already have it. So we're going to just drag it to our timeline like so. Now you can also edit clips on the actual preview above. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift to keep the proportions and then we're going to drag it down 
to make the logo smaller like so. And then we're going to align it horizontally and vertically by clicking those two buttons. And we're going to move this logo to the end. Now for the actual commercial, I want the text to play first and then the logo at the end. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap and then I'm going to drag this logo out so that it's approximately five seconds long, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that gap for the text. And as you can see, the timeline is shifting automatically. And now that we already have the logo in place, I'm just going to hold shift and make it a little bit smaller as well as realign it. So now that we've added our logo to the timeline, we're going to just add some fades to it. Now, of course, you can click on the logo and add other effects as well, such as filters and transforming it and other effects. But we just need to add a fade for this commercial. So we're going to go back into transparency, fade in from the scene beginning, and then click on OK. And then we're going to go to video, we're going to go to video effects. We're going to go to transparency, fade out, and then to the scene end. And we're going to click OK. And then if we go back into the scene, the main scene, and we go to the start of the logo, we can see that it fades in and it will also fade out like so. Perfect. Now that we've added images, the next thing we're also going to be doing is adding text. And so to add text, you can go to add object in the editor tab and then go to text, or we can also just click on the text button over here, click on text, and then we're going to do it from the cursor position and we're going to click on OK. And then we can just draw a box and we can see the text layer has been added. And then we can just start typing in whatever we want. So I'm going to type in introducing the new mini. I'm going to press Control A to select it all. I'm going to align it to the middle. I'm also going to just change the font. And I think that Barlow condensed thin would look good. Actually, no, that doesn't look that good. We're going to keep scrolling and we're going to use Century Gothic. That looks a lot better. And then what we can do is once we're back on the cursor tool, we can of course move around the text, but I'm just going to use the alignment features to align it to the center like so. And now that we have the text added, we're also going to change the duration so that it's right in between the last clip and the logo. And then we can also add the same effects, which in this case is the fades by going into video effects, transparency, fade in. Okay. And then video effects, transparency, fade out. And then we're going to click okay. And it added it to the start and the end. And now if we go into the main scene, we also have the text. And if we preview it, it works perfectly. Now I do think it's a little bit long, so I'm going to shorten the length of the text and the logo. But what you'll notice is if we double click on either of those elements, it doesn't change the length of the fades or the location, which is perfect. And we can also see now in the objects explorer, within this scene, we have the objects that we've added, which is the videos and the text and the logo, but it also shows you the effects, which you can edit right here as well. So now we have all of the elements added except for our music. And so to add audio to your timeline, all you have to do is drag it like so, and we're going to just put it right below. And you can also just click on this music icon to add sounds as well, if you haven't already. And now we can see the timeline has automatically stretched out to fit this long song, but we only need the first 16 seconds. So I'm going to drag the cursor to the 16 second mark. I'm going to click on the music file and then I'm going to click on the razor tool and it's going to split the clip right where the cursor is. And then I'm just going to delete the part we don't need. And now we have our music. And now when it comes to editing music, you can edit it in the exact same way as all your other elements. So if we go into the properties window, we could change the volume of the track if we wanted to make it louder over here but we don't need to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're also just going to add fades to the audio by going into audio effects. And then we're going to go into amplitude, fade in from the scene beginning, click okay. And then audio effects, amplitude, fade out. And then it's going to be the scene end, click okay. And the fades are added. And we could have also added other effects such as filters, as well as we could silence audio if we needed to, but we don't need to make any of those edits. So our commercial is pretty much done now. 
And so all we need to do now is just preview this commercial and we can do so by clicking on this I logo over here. And we can see that all our clips are playing with the music. And that looks perfect to me. So once we're done making our actual project, the final step is to just export it. And to export it, all we have to do is go to export project. And then what we're going to see is we're going to see the video properties. Now I'm going to save it as an AVI. And then here what you can do is you can change the name and location of your file by clicking on change name. So I'm going to keep it as mini commercial, mini Cooper commercial two, and I'm going to click on save. And you can also edit the profile. So these are going to be your output settings. And so I'm just going to keep it at the original res resolution, which was 1080p, but you can also change that over here. And then once everything is set up the way you want it, you click on apply profile. And then finally, to export your project, you click on export project. And you're going to see that right now, hardware acceleration is a premium feature, but that just means that it's going to be more efficient when exporting. We don't need that. So we can just click on continue and it's going to start to export our project and it's going to be done and saved to our file path. But that's about it for this video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo and I'm signing out.